global financial conditions are not bad. And the reason why they're not bad, we have just talked about it a few minutes ago, is because central banks remain with very accommodative policies despite what they call tightening. This is not tightening having real negative rates and continuing to have very aggressive levels of balance sheet, those are not certainly tightening policies. They are tightening, but not certainly hawkish, okay? So what we have in front of us is an environment in which banks, commercial banks, have found that the likelihood of having real negative rates for a prolonged period of time is very high and that liquidity injections are going to continue. The Fed it consistently increases liquidity injections via the reverse repo program. The ECB is also doing that. Therefore, what we know is going to happen in 2023 is that central banks will do anything to maintain liquidity in the system, and commercial banks know that. That's why global financial conditions are slightly stretched, but not to the point of crisis. All of it looks relatively positive. Think about this. We're talking accommodative central bank policy. On the other hand, commercial banks remain uh, with a certain level of ample supply of credit, etc. But the zombification of the economy persists and the rise in zombie companies is very concerning. Very concerning because in 2023, weakening margins and, uh, in, and much worse cash flow generation are going to be not things that we look in one, two, three companies. They're likely to be the norm. Huh? So we need to think about this and be very aware of that, of that situation. Because if we look at the market in 2023, there is a very high risk that all of the returns that will be generated by investors will happen in the first quarter. Why? Because in the first quarter, we'll have all these sort of headwinds, sorry, tailwinds that uh, keep a certain level of uh, positiveness in the economy. We're going to have the reopening of China. We're going to have weak uh, commodity prices still below the levels that we would consider a very high risk. We will have the uh, still robust messages coming from the earnings season after the downgrades, so the, the, fake, the fake positives of the fake beats. Mm -hmm. And we're also likely to have governments talking about supporting the economy. So in that first quarter, the messages are likely to be that investors will have discounted the rise in interest rates, discounted the tightening of monetary policy, but including the reopening of China, the higher level of uh, uh, credit, the improvement in some conditions here and there. So that is likely to provide a certain level of, of optimism. The concern may happen into the second part of the year when reality kicks in. And that's what we need to be monitoring all the time. So we need to be quite short term in our view of the market. And we certainly need to be prudent because we already saw in August what a big mistake it is to fall into the trap of believing that, the, that everything is, all the negatives are already discounted.